Dear students, I welcome you all to this lecture series in signals and systems. In this video, we will see what are the various types of signals depending on various factors. We will see various types of signals and I will try to describe in brief. If you want any two types of the signals in detailed explanation, you can say it in the comment section. Then I will definitely make a video on that. So we have various types of signals depending on various factors. So depending on the continuity, we can divide the signals into two types, continuous time and discrete time. So for any continuous time signal x of t, it will have values at any given instant of t. So for x of t to be continuous time signal, this x of t should have values for every value of t. So if I want to show you in graphical representation, suppose we have t along the x-axis and suppose x of t, this function along the y-axis. Suppose this is a signal. So if we see at any point of time, suppose here at this point we have t equal to 0, so x of t has some value. Suppose for here at this point, this x of t has some another value. Here we have suppose 10, t equal to 10. Here also you will have some certain value in the x of t. So this is a continuous time signal. That means you will have the value of x of t for every instance of time. And the other type is the discrete time signal. So discrete time signal means you will have the signal value at discrete intervals of time. Suppose here we have small n and here we have suppose x of n. Why I am writing in this fashion? Because discrete time signals are represented in this way. This x of t or in other form also you can represent x curly bracket t. So this is another representation. In case of continuous time signal, we use the first bracket. Okay. In case of discrete time signal, we use the square bracket or the curly bracket. Here in this case, we'll have certain values. Suppose for 0 point, we have some value here. Okay. Suppose this is one value. So one also suppose have some value here. Okay. Here two also suppose have this much of value. Okay. This is the value. Then for three also, we'll have some value. Okay. Similarly, for this minus 1 also, we'll have some value. Similarly, for minus 2 also some value. So similarly, for minus 3, suppose if we have x of n equal to 0, so here we'll have the value. That means we can say that in case of discrete time signal, we'll have the signal value at discrete intervals of time. So if we consider 0 0.5, 0 0.5, so it will be in between this, this 0 and 1. So there is no value. Because this is a discrete time signal, we do not have x of n value for any value of n we have the x of n value at discrete intervals of time okay so here we have the values in 1 2 3 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 okay 0 so in these values we have the value for the remaining values we do not have any value so this is a discrete time signal in the second types of classification we have analog signals and digital signals so what is an analog signal so an analog signal let me draw it here so here we'll have suppose x of t and here we have suppose t so this x of t can take any values suppose we have a value curve here so that means at this point we have some value okay at this point zero we have some value at this point also some value we have okay and it is not following any fixed or any specific values it can have any values so this type of signal is called as the analog signal. Now let me draw the digital signal. In case of digital signal, we have some discrete or finite value or finite levels in the amplitude or whatever we have considered. So if we consider it to be a digital signal, so suppose here we can have like this, like this. So this is a digital type of signal so you can see at any point of time we have some discrete value so suppose minus two so suppose this is plus two this is plus one then we have zero here okay and suppose here we have this is minus two this is minus one so this signal can take discrete value so this is suppose t and here we'll have x of t so this type of signal is called as the digital signal so the definition will be if the signal takes some finite number of values or finite steps of values, then it is called as the discrete time signal. And here we can have any value. Here this is another value, this is another value, another value. Okay. This analog signal can take any type of value, any value. Okay. In the range. 
and the digital signal can take only some fixed values so in case of binary signal it is a digital signal it will have only one or zero okay if it is a polar signal it will have minus one plus one it will have some finite number of values so in the third classification we have real signals and complex signals for real signal this x of t is a real number that means this x of t does not have any imaginary part and in case of real signal it will follow that x of t is equal to x conjugate of t okay because it does not have a complex part now what is a complex signal so in case of complex signal this x of t is equal to minus x conjugate of t okay now you have understood suppose if we take a signal suppose x of t is equal to only cos of suppose omega t then it does not have a imaginary part okay this is a real signal and if x of t is equal to suppose cos of omega t plus j sine of omega t okay that means it has some complex part this j is nothing but j is equal to root over minus 1 so this signal is a complex signal because it has some imaginary part so if we find out the complex conjugate so x conjugate of t so what will have it will be cos of omega t minus j sine of omega t so these two signals are not equal now there is another classification that is deterministic signal and random signal so in case of deterministic signal we have the signals that have some deterministic value or the signal can be represented with some mathematical expression so in case of deterministic signal suppose x of t is it is a signal this can be expressed with some mathematical expression in case of random signal it can have any values so how we can describe a random signal so this can be characterized with statistical procedure so x of t can have any value at given time t and must be characterized statistically that means for the random signals we use some statistical procedure for characterization and for deterministic signal we can express the signal with some mathematical expression and here in this case we use some statistical procedure for explaining the signals that means in simple words we can say that deterministic signals are those signals which can be expressed with some mathematical expression and random signals we cannot express in mathematical form okay we can only characterize this type of signal using statistical procedure a deterministic signal suppose we have a sine wave so this is a deterministic type of signal that means we can represent it in some mathematical expression that is x of t is equal to suppose sine of omega t okay so omega is the twice pi of it is the frequency term okay or angular frequency we can say so in case of random signal it can have any values okay it can have any values so this type of signal is called as the random signal now we have the even and odd type of signal so in case of even signal x of minus t is equal to x of t and for the odd signal x of minus t is equal to minus x of t so how to find out the even and the odd signals so we can express any signal in terms of even and odd parts so if it is a continuous time signal x of t we can write it as x even part of t plus x odd part of t so in case of discrete time signal how we can represent x of n is equal to x even part of n plus x odd part of n so this is the signal representation so if we are given with a signal x of t how we can find out the even part so for finding out the even part we will have the formula x even of t so this is the even part of t so here we have this formula half of x of t plus x of minus t so this is the formula for finding out the even part in case of continuous time signal so for discrete time signal x e of n we can find out with the same type of formula so here we will have x of n and plus x of minus n 
so here we have the square brackets so for continuous time signal we have this formula for finding out the event part okay so here i am writing it is event signal similarly for odd signal so how we can represent so x o of t is equal to half of x of t minus x of minus t so using this formula we can find out the odd part of a signal similarly for discrete type of signal x o of n is equal to half of x of n minus x of minus n so these are the formulas for finding out the event signal and odd signal next we have this six type of classification in the six type of classification we have periodic signal and we have non-periodic signal so from the word itself you can understand a periodic signal will repeat its characteristic or repeat its pattern after some definite intervals of time so in case of periodic signal so we can represent it mathematically as x of t plus capital t is equal to x of t for all values of t here the capital t is the period period of the signal similarly for discrete time signal we'll have to represent in terms of n so x of n plus capital n here will represent is equal to x of n so for all values of small n okay and here capital n is the period so you can understand now a periodic signal will have some period and after that it will repeat the signal suppose we consider a sinusoidal signal x of t and here we have t so after a complete interval this is a period capital t and after this period it will again repeat the same pattern after this time period after this period capital t it is again repeating so this is a periodic signal so we can say that in case of periodic signal the signal will, will repeat itself after certain period okay if we consider it to be a discrete time signal so what will be the graph so here we have period equal to 4 <coughs> from 0 1 2 3 so here we have 4 period okay n equal to 4 here so this signal is repeating itself after certain interval or certain period okay so here in this side we have small n okay so this is a continuous time periodic signal this is a discrete time periodic signal so if any signal does not repeat this kind of periodic pattern then it is called as the non-periodic signal now we have the seventh type of classification so in the seventh type of classification we have the energy signals and power signal so what is the energy signal so for energy signals simply if we want to say it has some finite energy and its power is equal to zero and in case of power signal its power have some finite value and the energy is infinite now let us discuss it in detail so in case of energy signal the energy can be defined as integration minus infinity to infinity so if we have some signal x of t then x of t mod square dt this is called as the energy of this signal okay energy of the signal x of t similarly for discrete time signal what will be the definition e equal to summation for discrete time signal we have to sum it so n equal to minus infinity to infinity then we have modulus x of n then whole square so this is for discrete time signal this is for continuous time signal so in the left hand side we have for continuous time signal and in the right hand side we have for the discrete time signal so similarly we can calculate the power so how we can calculate the power so power average power we can calculate it as if we calculate the average power of a continuous time signal then we'll have limit capital t tends to infinity 1 by t integration minus t by 2 to capital t by 2 okay and we'll have here the signal x of t mod square dt so this is the power of the signal x of t and similarly for the discrete time signal the average power will be pavg is the power average is equal to 
now let us understand when we call it to be an energy signal and when we call it to be a power signal so for energy signal we have seen energy must be finite and power is equal to zero similarly for power signal power is finite and energy is infinite okay if this above two condition is not satisfied that means if except these two conditions if there is another possible condition then it is called as neither energy signal nor power signal so in this tutorial i have shown you various classification or various types of signal depending on various factors so we, here we have discussed seven different classification okay if you want the detailed explanation of any type of signal any of this you can write it in the comment section thank you for watching if you have any question please put it in the comment section below also like share and subscribe to my channel thank you